Let's stand together for the reading of the Word of God. I want to read Romans 10, at least the majority of the chapter, Romans chapter 10 from the Legacy Standard Bible. Romans 10. Brothers, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. For I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For not knowing about the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of law, the man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will go up to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will go down into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, leading to righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, leading to salvation. For the Scripture says, whoever believes upon him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on Him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in Him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. And this is the gospel truth from heaven itself. Let's bow in prayer. Now, Father, we know that the Apostle Paul was profoundly burdened, his heart's desire, his prayer was for the salvation of his people. He understood that though they were religious, they were not saved, though they were self-righteous, they did not have a righteousness acceptable to you. Though they adhered to the law, they did not put their faith in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Thus, no matter how religious they were, they were headed for eternal judgment. Father, we thank you that we as your people can gather here today because you have reached down and exposed our wretchedness, our sinfulness, and you have pointed out to us that we are alienated from you, cut off from the life of God. Strangers, even children of wrath. But you illuminated us with the word, with the gospel, you regenerated us by the Holy Spirit. You gave us life from death and light from darkness. You drew us to yourself. You lifted us up, reconciled with us, redeemed us, adopted us, and granted us an eternal inheritance in your presence. And this is all of grace for we deserve none of it. 
We thank you for the salvation that draws us into your beloved and redeemed church and brings us together today to worship. May we do so with thankful hearts, for to us has been granted all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Incomparable and eternal blessing for those who trust Christ. May we worship with joy and may we again accept the responsibility to take the truth of the gospel that someone brought to us and make sure we're faithful in proclaiming it to others. Use your word, the fellowship, and even the expressions of worship to draw us closer to you and renew our commitment to be obedient and to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We ask in the name of Christ.